a very special Happy Mother's Day to everybody. And um, I commend the announcements to you in, your, uh, in the bulletin. Uh, and you can take that home and remember that next Saturday morning we will gather to do a cleanup around the church here and uh, make the property beautiful for the summer months. Uh, and there is, uh, thanks to Barb Graham, uh, a watering schedule up on the bulletin board if you're able to help us out over the next few months to make sure that our planters continue to thrive. That would be wonderful and thank you in advance for that. I want to say a special thank you to Petra um, for uh, doing such a wonderful job and boy oh boy to the research she must have done. I, I had the pleasure of watching the videos uh, when I came home this week uh, in between my conference that I was attending and uh, I want to thank her and also to Scott and Annie for their music as well. So thank you while I was away. So I thought it might be a little bit interesting, and I think I've shared this before, to just do a little history about Mother's Day and um, also to acknowledge that this day can be a day of celebration for some, but it also can be a painful day for many. And we acknowledge that there are many women who struggle with fertility, and we know there are those who have been unable to have children, those who have lost a child, um, and there are many who have experienced difficult relationships with their mothers, um, those who may have lost their mothers already, um, or those who may be estranged from their mothers. And so we name all those things today and recognize that for some this day can be a very difficult day. And we hold all in prayer, those who celebrate and those who mourn and lament. It's interesting to note that the first recorded celebration of Mother's Day is ba goes back to the year 1908, and it originated in the U.S., and it was founded by a woman by the name of Anna Marie Jarvis, who wanted to honor her deceased mother um, and acknowledged um, for a, that there should be a day to acknowledge mothers um, where they would be honored and appreciated. Um, and so in 1908, Anna Jarvis held a memorial for her mother at St. Andrew's Methodist Church in Grafton, West Virginia. And that was the beginning of um, the process, of course, when Hallmark took it over and made it a little more grand. <laughs> but that was the original intent of Mother's Day. Uh, in our Christian tradition today, and, and especially in the United Church, I think we were kind of the instigators of this, we uh, celebrate this day as Christian Family Sunday. And we acknowledge um, the family of God and our relationship to one another as siblings in Christ. Um, and uh, I, at my conference this past week, one of my colleagues um, said this quote that I printed in the bulletin today, and I wrote it down quickly. Um, I've kind of paraphrased it before, but he just put it so succinctly. Church is not a place to go. It's a family we belong to. And I hope here at Bethel you find a place where you belong. And now a little bit of a treat for Mother's Day. Now get up out of bed, wash your face, brush your teeth, comb your sleepy head. Here's your clothes and your shoes, hear the words I said. Get up now, get up and make your bed. Are you hot? Are you cold? Are you wearing that? Where's your books and your lunch and your homework at? Grab your coat and your gloves and your scarf and hat. Don't forget, you gotta feed the cat. Eat your breakfast, the experts tell us it's the most important meal of all. Take your vitamins so you will grow up one day to be big and tall. Because when the Lord the goddess will be seeing you at three today. Don't forget your piano lesson is this afternoon, so you must play, don't shovel. Too slowly, but hurry, the bus is here. Be careful, come back here. Did you wash behind your ears? Play outside, don't leave a Would you just play fair? Be polite, make a friend, don't forget to share. Work it out, wait your turn, never take a dare. Get along, don't make me come down there. Clean your room, fold your clothes, put your stuff away. Make your bed, do it now. Do we have all day? Were you born in a barn? Would you like some hay? Can you even hear a word I say? Get off the phone, don't sit so close. Turn it down, no texting at the table. No more computer time tonight. Your iPod. You don't listen up. Where are you going and with whom and what time do you think you're coming home? Saying thank you, please excuse me, makes you welcome everywhere you run. You'll appreciate my wisdom someday when you're older and you're grown. Can't wait till you have a couple little children of your own. You'll thank me for 
for the counsel I gave you so willingly, but right now I thank you not to roll your eyes at me. Close your mouth when you chew, we'd appreciate. Take a bite, maybe two of the stuff you hate. Use your fork, do not burp, or I'll set you straight. Eat the food I put up on your plate. Get an egg in the door, don't get smart with me. Get a grip, get in here on count, two, three. Get a job, get a life, get a PhD, get a ghost. And tell the truth for once, for heaven's sake And if all your friends jumped off a cliff Would you jump to? If I've said it once, I've said at least a thousand times before That you're too old to act this way It must be your father's DNA Look at me when I am talking, stand up straighter When you walk a place for everything And everything must be in place Stop crying or I'll give you something real to cry about. Oh! Wash your teeth, wash your face, put your PJs on, get in bed, get a hug, say a prayer with mom. Don't forget, I love you. And tomorrow we will do this all again because the moms are clever. So you don't need the reason why. Because, 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 because. I said so, I said so, I said so, I said so. I'm the mom, the mom, the mom, the mom, the mom. Ta-da! And Laura, if you have not said anything to baby Eleanor like that, there, you will, trust me. All those things you will say. Miriam knows. <laughs> I think I've said them all. <laughs> I just. There you go. So, a little fun for today. <laughs> Friends, it is indeed good to be here. And I invite us now to prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we gather together in the light of Jesus Christ. shepherd is where goodness fail or never I nothing lack if I am his and he is mine forever and he is mine forever where streams of living Water flow, my ransom soul deleted. When the verdant pastures grow, with food celestial feeding, never failing, ruler of my heart, everlasting, lover of my soul. off I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently lay, and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil I fear no ill, with thee dear Lord beside me, thy rod and staff my comfort still. Before to guide me, never failing, ruler of my heart, everlasting, lover of my soul on the mountain high or in the valley low, the king of love, my shepherd is never failing.
so through all the length of days, thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing your praise within your house forever. Within your house forever. Come and see the shepherd, listen to his voice, and let him gently guide you where you may not want to go. Come and see. Jesus, our shepherd, is here and is calling you by name. Come, let us worship our shepherd. I invite us to stand as we sing together. We have come into his house. creator of us all we gather to worship you we come as individuals we come in family units we come as neighbors and friends gathered here as one we come here where we are known by name welcomed with all our fragilities and strength and we know that you are a good shepherd lord we hear your call we know your voice we follow your paths you lead us beside still waters you guide us to the springs of life you shelter us and restore our souls, and in you we find life everlasting. And so we come humbly into your presence this day in praise and worship and adoration, and our hearts run over with your unfailing goodness and never-ending love. In the name of our Savior we pray. Amen. And let us continue as we sing, come in, come in and sit down, for you are a part of the family.
rest for the weary and tell for us all. There's a yoke that is easy and a burden that's small. So come in and worship and answer the call, for we are a part of the family. Come in, come in and sit down. You are a part of the family. We are lost and we are found, and we are a part of the family. This morning I invite us into our first scripture reading, which is Psalm 23. And this morning, Linnea Good is going to lead us in this psalm. She's going to share it with um, some hand movements. And uh, we'll watch that first, and then she invites us to echo it back. So let us listen to God's word for us this day. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He gives me rest in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He gives me strength when I am weak. He leads me where I need to go. Even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a meal for me, even with my enemies at the same table. You anoint my head with the oil of blessing. My cup of blessing overflows completely. Surely, goodness and mercy shall be mine all the days of my life, and I will dwell in God's house forever. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He gives me rest in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He gives me strength when I am weak. He leads me where I need to go. Even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a meal for me, even with my enemies at the same table. You anoint my head with your oil of blessing. My cup of blessing overflows completely. goodness and mercy shall be mine. All the days of my life. And I will live in God's house forever.
There are many times we find ourselves with no time to rest or to sit by calm oases of grace or find the right paths to follow. And so often we hurt people with our words and our deeds. We turn away from the one who seeks to feed us with goodness and mercy. So let us come to our God who longs to anoint us with forgiveness as we offer our prayers together, saying, Master, Savior, Shepherd, Messiah, we know you by many names, Lord. Your presence fills our lives. All that we are and all that we have comes from you. All that you do declares your love for us. Yet when trouble comes, when adversity plagues us, we wonder where you are. We even wonder who you are. How quickly we forget that you are always with us. Dispel our gloom and despair. Change our garments of darkness into robes of dazzling light. Spread your table before us and feed us from your hand. Lead us in the paths of righteousness. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Friends, rejoice and be glad when you hear the good news. God will give us the waters of life to strengthen us. God will be with us in every moment, in every place of our lives. Through all the joys and all the strengths of living in relationship, one truth is offered to each and every one of us. God has loved us, is loving us, and will always love us. Anointed with grace, fed with joy and wonder, we offer blessing and thanksgiving to the one who loves us and forgives us, now and forever. Thanks be to God. Shepherd, I'm not warned. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. My soul.
Our gospel lesson for today is taken from the 10th chapter of John. It was now winter, and Jesus was in Jerusalem in the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. He was in the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Colonnade. The people surrounded him and asked, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have already told you and you don't believe me. The proof is in the work I do in my Father's name. But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come before you this day, our hearts open, our ears ready to listen. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is ever present. And we pray your Spirit come upon us now as we listen to your word. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today I'd like to just take a few moments to reflect on what is probably one of the most familiar psalms, probably one of the most commonly read passages of scripture, the 23rd Psalm. The psalmist begins with this profound affirmation of faith. And it differs slightly in the translations, but let me share a few with you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I have everything I need. I lack nothing. I will never be in need. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. And this is rather a profound affirmation of our faith, isn't it? Especially in the face of a world that seeks to maintain power and control, independence and self-sufficiency, a culture that tells us over and over that our worth is dependent upon what we earn, what job we have, where we will live, how beautiful or handsome we are, or how many friends or followers you might have on your social media page. The marketplace lures us with false promises of fulfillment if we will only buy and buy and buy some more. And away from this beloved community of the word, we are tempted to see ourselves as our own controllers of our destiny and our future, as well as our fortune. What need have we for the church? What need have we for belief in Jesus when we can strive for our own fulfillment, be our own God? and seek our own dreams of success and status. Into this, the psalmist proclaims that everything of worth and value in this life depends on first and foremost and foundationally belonging to and trusting in the power of the Good Shepherd saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. 
And the truth is, what this psalmist declares is never does our status before God depend on how we feel, on having the right experience, on being free of doubt, or on what we accomplish in this life. It depends on one thing only, that we are known by him. And Jesus affirms this in our gospel today. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they will never perish. In a sermon honoring the 200th anniversary of the Congregational Church in Rupert, Vermont, Frederick Beekner begins with these words. God's in his heaven, all's right with the world, Robert Browning wrote. And the psalm is certainly not saying that any more than you or I can say it either. Whoever wrote the 23rd Psalm had walked through the valley of the shadow, the way one way or another you and I have walked there too. He says so himself. He believed that God was in his heaven despite the fact that he knew as well as we do that all was far from right with this world. And he believed that God was like a shepherd. When I think of shepherds, Beekner continues, I think of one man in particular I know who used to keep sheep here in Rupert a few years back. Some of them he gained names to and some of them he didn't, but he knew them equally well either way. If one of them got lost, he didn't have a moment's peace till he found it again. If one of them got sick or hurt, he would move heaven and earth to get it well again. He would feed them out of a bottle when they were newborn. If for some reason the mother wasn't around or wouldn't own them, as he puts it. He always called them in at the end of the day so the wild dogs wouldn't get them. I've seen him, says Beekner, wade through snow up to his knees with a bale of hay in each hand to feed them on bitter cold winter evenings, shaking it out and putting it in the manger. I've stood with him in their shed with a 40-watt bulb hanging down from the low ceiling to light up their timid, greedy, foolish, half-holy faces as they pushed and butted each other to get at it. Because if God is like a shepherd, there are more than just a few ways, needless to say, that people like you and me are like sheep, being timid, greedy, foolish, and half-holy is only part of it. God is like the shepherd who cares so passionately about the sheep, who cares and loves us the same, and wants an abundant and fruitful life for each of us. But the abundant life of which Jesus speaks is not necessarily about what the world speaks about abundance. It's not abundance in years or wealth or status or accomplishments. It is a life that is abundant with the love of God made known to us in Jesus the Christ. And then it is a love that overflows to others. And it is a love that is eternal because it is a source is in God who is eternal and Jesus who is the resurrection and the life, the master of all new beginnings. But the truth is, and each of us knows this, that it doesn't take much to bring us to our knees with the reality that we are not in control of abundance, 
that the good life we seek can suddenly, without warning, become the valley of death and despair and darkness, where we find ourselves like that lost, hungry sheep. Maybe it is in the sudden loss of someone so dear to us. Maybe it is the ending of a job or career with an unknown and uncertain future in front of us with many, many bills to pay. Maybe it is finding yourself lost, trying to figure out what comes next, what purpose God has in store for your life. Maybe you have found yourself in the valley of the early years of parenting, when you feel as though you have no idea what you're doing. Or the teenage years, when you barely can communicate and understand the child in front of you. Or perhaps you've been there in making the transition to being the parent of adult children, where letting go and keeping silent are some of the greatest challenges. Or perhaps you know the fear of awaiting test results after your latest visit to the doctor or facing the diagnosis you never expected. And yet, into all of these twists and turns of life, the psalmist declares, even when the way goes through Death Valley, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I walk through the darkest valley, even if I go through deepest darkness, what? I will fear no evil. I will not be afraid. I will fear no danger. Why? Because our shepherd is with us. The power of the Spirit of God that is alive and present in this world today brings comfort and guidance to feed us to revive our drooping head and to fill our cup overflowing with blessing. That is not to just say that the valleys will ever be prevented or we will be removed from them, but rather it is a promise to offer us sustenance and provision for our souls when we find ourselves going through them. The message version of Psalm 23 puts it simply, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. Where? Martin Luther likened the psalm's green pasture to the church and the church's beloved community to the good shepherd's flock. On this Christian Family Sunday, we acknowledge and remember that it is indeed here in the community of faith, through our relationship to and with one another, that we can and will see God's promises alive and at work. We are stronger in community, and we have the capacity to be better, too. Maybe you sense God's presence in the words of a hymn sung that speak so profoundly into your pain that tears begin to well in your eyes. Perhaps you have gathered around the table and heard the words, the body of Christ broken for you. And you remembered that Christ came to bring healing and wholeness to your life. Not only to your life, but to the world. Maybe the words of scripture touch your heart so profoundly that you know that you are not alone and once again find the hope to try again and carry on. Perhaps another person senses that life isn't okay for you right now and offers a hug 
a pat on the back, or a smile that reminds you that you are never alone. Maybe someone is asking for your help with a new project, and in that way offers you purpose once again, just when you were wondering if there was anything worthwhile left in your life. Or maybe over a cup of coffee and a listening ear, you are given the opportunity to name your fear or your pain or your struggle without any judgment. And the knot in your stomach disappears for a moment. Or perhaps you are the person that has hidden your true self and identity for too long out of the experience of hatred and condemnation from others. But here, in a safe, beloved community of Jesus Christ, you finally find a place where you are free to be you, just the way God created you. My friends, the voice of the Good Shepherd is indeed a voice that liberates, that brings abundant life rather than oppresses. It does not say, do this, and then maybe you'll be good enough one day to be one of my sheep. It says, you belong to me already. And no one can snatch you out of my hand. And secure in this belonging, we are free to live the abundant life of which Jesus spoke to earlier in the gospel. When he says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. My prayer for us, my friends, as God's beloved community, in and through our relationships to one another, is that we can see and know and feel the promise of this most beloved passage of Scripture lived out. That we can show others that the Eternal is my shepherd and he cares for me always. That he provides me rest in rich green fields. Besides streams of refreshing water, he soothes my fears. He makes me whole again, steering me off worn hard paths to roads where truth and righteousness echo his name. Because there is indeed power in community, in being part of something greater than yourself, in being reminded that even in the broken places and spaces of your life and the world, those valley of the shadows, God is at work, making all things new, making us whole again, accompanying each of us on the journey and meeting us just where we are. The psalmist's words are a reminder to each of us not only to praise and to pray, but constantly to be aware of who we are and whose we are. We have so many blessings, and we have enough. And we always, always have enough to share and make room for one more person. Because our cup runs over, and we have no need to want. For God will always provide a means and a way. My friends, though it often may seem dark, though it may feel cold, though death and evil may parade their influence wherever we may look, know this. Beneath it all, invincible and undefeated, subversive and undeniable, grows life. And wherever people clothe themselves in faith, in truth, in peace, in justice and salvation, wherever people live, by the words of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, life will always stand in defiance of death. So this day, would you join with me as we affirm our faith? Rejoice in the one who leads us beside still waters and gives us refreshment for our soul. For Jesus, our shepherd, shows us the way we should go so that the name of God will be glorified, even if and when we encounter 
the trials and temptations of this life, when sorrow prevails and darkness is all around, we will not be afraid, for the great shepherd of our souls is with us. Let us pray. Shepherd of our lives, guide us to the still waters. Lead us on the right paths. Walk beside us when we go through our darkest valleys. Help us to know your comforting presence is always with us. We know that in you there is nothing to be afraid of, so help us to stand for love and peace and justice. We know that you prepare the table before us, that you care for us, and we are your sheep forever. Help us in this world to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. And wherever we may go, may we follow your path. In the name of Christ, our Good Shepherd, we pray. Amen. shepherd, good shepherd, who leads us safely through danger, while calming our fears? Are you a father who shelters and feeds us, shares in our laughter and wipes away tears? Yes, you are shepherd, parent and teacher, but you are greater than all that we know. Holy and living, loving and giving, God, you are with us wherever we go. Are you a mother, good mother, who lives us, comforts, protects us, and helps us to who daily prepares us, challenging students to offer their best. Yes, you are shepherd, parent, and teacher, but you are greater than all that we know. Holy and living, loving and giving, God, you are Gentle shepherd forever beside us, lead all your children in paths that are right. Great loving parent, wise teacher, you guide us. We want to love you and bring you delight. Yes, you are shepherd, parent and teacher. But you are greater than all that we know. Holy and living, loving and giving, God, you are with us wherever we go. And now as we come to the time in our service where we offer our time and our talent and our financial support, to further God's kingdom, we pray that for those who have no place to rest, our gifts may provide shelter. For those who are parched for justice, our generosity may quench their thirst. For those who wander the streets alone and afraid, our blessings may provide a way. And for those who are in the valleys of suffering, that we may choose to offer ourselves as companions on the journey. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, all of your works, all that you have done for us, testify to your love. You gave everything to bring us the promise of eternal life, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, may all that we do and all that we are testify to your amazing care 
and compassion. In gratitude and love, we offer our gifts and our very selves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you now to come to the table of Jesus, our Savior and Shepherd. Jesus invites you here as part of the family of God. Come to this table humbly, not because you have earned a place here, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love God and want to love God more. Come because Jesus first loved us and gave himself for us. Come because you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come because you want to experience the mystery of God's grace. Let us stand together as we sing our communion hymn, All Who Are Thirsty. Let us come to the table. May our shepherd be with you. Come to the table prepared for all of God's children. Bring our hearts to be anointed with grace and hope. Join in singing praise to the one who leads us through the kingdom. 
We hold hands with goodness and mercy in giving thanks to God. The warmth of creation has breathed into the bitter winter of creation, God of new life, planting grassy meadows for picnics, pooling clear waters for floating, spackling starry skies for gazing, a great multitude of creatures, too many to count. You shaped us in your image so we might never, ever want, but we let death anoint us with sin's slick temptations. You sent women and men to us who encouraged us to get up and to return to your side, but we refused to walk in the light of your hope. So you sent Jesus to us, that we might hear his voice and believe his plain spoken words. And so with those who worship you in every moment, with those who hunger and thirst for you, we offer thanksgiving and praise with these words. Holy, holy, Holy are you, God of glory and honor. All creation falls down to worship you. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who gives us eternal life. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God of wisdom and thanksgiving, and blessed is Jesus Christ, the Lamb become shepherd. When we fear everything imaginable and unimaginable, he comes to anoint us with hope. When our hearts are empty, he fills them with your love. When the world mocks us, he comforts us with your grace. And when sin and death pretend to be our companions, he sends goodness and mercy to be our lifelong friends. As we continue to follow the risen Lord, as we listen to the voice of our shepherd, we would speak of that faith, which is mystery, saying together, Christ died, walking through death's shadows. Christ was raised, goodness and mercy following him into new life. Christ will come, that we might dwell in God's house forever. You have prepared this table for us, so now anoint this meal with your spirit, as well as those gathered in this place. We are fed the bread in its brokenness so we might go to restored fractured relationship with those we do not like. To comfort the grieving with your hope and love. And through the cup, your grace overflows to us so we might anoint the lost and lonely with your goodness and mercy. We might lead the oppressed out of the valleys of injustice. And when you lead us into your house at the end of time, we will join our sisters and brothers around the table prepared for us, worshiping and praising you day and night. God, in community, holy and one, we gather all of these prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so we come to this table and remember that on the night before he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and shared it with his friends, and he broke it at the table and passed it to them, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. Take this and remember me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, and he poured it out and passed it around to his friends, saying, This is the cup of salvation poured out for you and for many. Each time you drink of this, remember me. Friends, these indeed are the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ broken for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite us now to take our first layer of cellophane off and to peel that back, and let us share together the body of Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ, my friends, is indeed the bread of life for you. Take and eat and remember. We take the cup and we drink of this Jesus Christ, the true vine, his blood poured out for you. Take and drink and remember. Let us pray. Creator God, we give you thanks for the grain farmers, the bread bakers, the grape growers, the juice makers. Redeemer God, we give you thanks for all that we remember as we have shared this meal, your birth, your life, your death and resurrection. Sustaining God, we give you thanks for the eternal presence of your spirit with us, surrounding us and filling us with divine life. May this meal we have shared renew us and inspire us to join more joyfully with you as you work for peace and justice in the world. In the name of Jesus, our good shepherd, we pray. Amen. Our final hymn today is Alleluia, Alleluia, Give Thanks. Let us stand together as we sing. your trust in the Good Shepherd and let us love, not just in words, but in truth and in action. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ and love one another just as he commanded us. And may God be at your side even in the valleys of darkness. 
May Christ Jesus be the cornerstone of your life. And may the Holy Spirit abide in you and tend you with love and mercy all the days of your life. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord, my friends. In the name of Christ, let us go. Amen. See, on the hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me, my Jesus set me free. Oh, look at the wounds that give me life, grace flowing from his side, no greater sacrifice. What he's done, what he's done, all the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. I praise God for what he's done. Sing for the freedom he has won. Even death is dead and done. His life has overcome. Speak, say the name above all names, over every broken place. He is risen from the grave. What he's done, what he's done, all the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, I praise God for what he's done. Now, on a throne of majesty, the Father's will complete, he reigns in victory. Sing. Hallelujah to the King, He is worthy to receive all the worship we can bring. What He's done, what He's done, all the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven. I praise God for what he's done, what he's done, what he's done, all the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, 